Is it uh, Rubens, you just had a, a, a steady race that produced a real quality finish. So congratulations on that, your first trip to Indianapolis. Thank you so, so very much. Um, first of all, I, I want to say that, yes, I did race a lot, but nothing like this. It's <laughs> impressive. This is uh, the first 180 laps, it's all okay. A lot of uh, respect on the last 20 laps, man. That's, uh, that's race. That's when the race starts. Um, unfortunately for that last 20 laps I had a little bit too much downforce in the car um, because then you could see people were not, not on the same level maybe they dropped the downforce or something because I was racy I was okay I could overtake people and I I had fun all afternoon but right at the end even though all, all the way flat and trying to stay on the draft they were, they, they were too much for me uh, so I'm glad it, I, you know I was able to still finish because Running inside, outside, and uh, like TK, Serbia, this guy, they know how to race on the outside. I'll you be back. You I'll be back. You I'll be back. You're back. You're, 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 you it's a lot of a mixed emotion. It's um, this this thing. I think I've drove uh, quite well for 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 the whole month. I was safe. The team plays safe with me. Uh, there are points in the race that you wish that you could pit because the car is just too loose or too pushy. There are. It's a very very long race. I guess the boys already talked a lot about that. And from my first experience, I. <clears throat> At the beginning, I had to play safe. At the, you know, right at the end, I was, you know, eager to go. And uh, if you think on the, on the penultimate start, he was, uh, if, if he was able to carry, uh, TK was able to carry a little bit longer into into one, because he was able to run on the outside. And I think that's when you got the lead there. I was right behind him, but you know, unfortunately, I had to lift from the, the push that I had. Let me know the next time. Yeah, I was asking when I saw you P P one, I said, but uh, ask him when he's gonna start. <laughs> Tell, him. ask him when he's gonna start with his throttle because I want to know. But it's uh, it was it was much more positive than anything else, and I I want to thank uh, again the whole team. I want to thank TK for for the help. Um, it was a good a good month for my birthday. It was a good uh, a good everything. So I'm I'm really pleased. Very good. We'll open it up to questions. Uh, two questions. First from Scott. I think you're in practice or qualifying. I remember you said something that you were not happy with the speed. Did you find for the race improvement? Improvement. And question number two. Whoever wants to answer from the three drivers. What we have seen today in the race in Indianapolis, do you think that is characteristic for the cross coming over racing, or is it just special because it is in Indianapolis? Um, I think you know, I, you know, we were in a bit of a tough situation come qualifying. I think uh, you know the 140 kPa boost wasn't a you know two-hour advantage, and we saw the margin sort of slip away. You know, I know on our team side we had engines that were miles mileage out pretty much the maximum uh, come qualified day which you know I think the engine uh, probably didn't have you know best power at that point so um, you know the new engine was was definitely better uh, fuel mileage was was vastly improved and, and uh, the speed even from car day seemed to be improved on, on the car so um, you know I think we were able to run a little more trim than, than maybe some of the other teams so I think that that added to, to, to it as well but you know our cars mechanically were, were fantastic race you know it was um, even in traffic it was pretty decent you know three four cars back you know I, I didn't have to fight it too much all day so um, yeah I think we we uh, Honda I think did a, did a fantastic job to, to uh, you know improve the, improve the power and, and the fuel economy. For, for Tony and for Scott uh, what did you see when Takuma tried to make that move what did you see what did you hear and was that incredibly brave or was that irresponsible? I, I, I heard looking at looking at the outcome. I think it was totally irresponsible. But uh, I heard a big bang. We we're, were talking on the elevator. I mean, it's easy for us to make a comment. But what I saw there, like Scott says, and we saw during the entire race, a guy that wants to get antsy on the last lap. He was going to get Dario, but it just waited a little too long, and 
you do not play Daria like that. You should know better than that. So uh, I think it was a, a young driver mistake, and that's going to hunt him a little bit. But, uh, you know, the last lap of the race, it is what it is. He tried. It could have worked for him. It could have worked for Scott or for myself, you know. And, and But it's easy to make a comment now. I would have done different. But I, I, I when I saw the move, I, I, I thought to myself, this this doesn't look good. And then I thought, secondly, maybe it's looking really good for me. <laughs> Scott, can you answer that, please? No, I'm very similar. You know, uh, I, you know, I think what sort of got our momentum a little a little crossed up was, you know, two to go, I think, when he, he dove uh, under me. You know, Dario definitely had a good run, and then Sato came kind of late. But, <clears throat> you know, I think it put us in a pretty decent situation. I think we had good speed to come back. and and maybe pick them, pick them off on the last lap. But, uh, you know, it, it was brave, but, you know, Dario gave him room. I think he was so close to pulling that off. Like, it was, uh, you know, I think if he didn't pinch it as much and, and maybe moved up on Dario a little bit more, it, it would have been uh, it would have been okay. But, um, you know, Dario did a, did a great job to save it. But, yeah, Sato, uh, I don't know why he didn't wait a little longer. I really don't. One more lap, it would have been fine. It's for uh, Rubens. Talk about that first lap for you and what it was like going through your head and then also what was it like taking with you? Um, I tell you, uh, I had a problem with the fuel pressure. Um, as soon as I went out, um, there was alarms for my fuel pressure and uh, that in a way kept me out of the, uh, the hype, you know, that, uh, you know, like what TK and, and, and the friends said about the turbulence and everything. I. I was a little bit worried with that, and, and in actual fact, when the race started, uh, when I pushed the throttle, I had a big cutoff. It was boom, boom. and when I changed gear again, it was all going, people just going bang, bang, bang. And I was dealing with that the whole race. But um, the first, the first um, start, I was, I had really to be careful with, uh, you know, I, I saw people trying here and there, and I, I also tried on the outside and made a made a mistake, but. Um, the restart um, and so many other occasions, it depend who was leading. It, they started in a different way and I was uh, in between like P5 and P15 all the time and I started to accelerate in different areas and that was the, the question because by the time sometimes we got to the, to the line, uh, there was four abreast and that's, that's for me was more impressive than the, than the actual uh, start of the race. Scott and Tony, um, obviously Dario is probably going to be buying the next round of beer. Uh, but I'm going to find the body. <laughs> there you go. I'm in that too. <laughs> You're invited. Um, I'm just wondering, what does this win mean for you guys and your relationship with Dario? Does this kind of put him on a pedestal in terms of one of the legends of this place? Or is he just still the same old Dario to you guys? No, I, you know, I think he's the same old Dario, but, uh, you know, three victories. He's now up there with Elio. Um, and, and uh, you know, I think if they win one more, well, there's four four-time winners maybe. So, you know, he's already in a, an illustrious group. And, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, he's, he, you know, the thing with Dario is he's always there. You know, even when he's had a you know, shoot earlier in the day, you know, a lot of guys probably wouldn't come back from that or mentally be strong enough to get back from that. So. You know, I, I think he's the, the same old Dario. He might have a few more accolades than some of us, but, um, you know, he's getting on too, I think. Well, actually, Tico, you might be too, actually. The way? How old are you? No, he's older. No, he's older. I'm so sorry. sorry. You know, uh, Dario, he's, he's much, much older than He'll be celebrating 40th. Shut up, old man. Shut up, old man. I'm a rookie. <laughs> you know I, I'm seated here because I'm a rookie. The oldest <laughs> rookie. That's where I cut a rookie. <laughs> the oldest rookie we've ever seen. <laughs> so no, I think nothing will change that. I agree. I think this is uh, the beauty. The beauty of Dario. It's he will never change. You know, he's always been picky. He's always has his own ways to do things. But uh, you know, as a personal friend of mine, uh, it didn't matter. It's the same guy that had won zero championships and zero 500s until today. So it's a guy that appreciates life and friends and family. So uh, thank God nothing got on top of his head about all the winnings and things that he has, which is uh, that's why we're, we're good friends. David. 
Scott, you and uh, Dario had a, just a ton of those back and forth passes, legal lab, the other guy passes. How much of that was intentional and how much of it was a, a, a product of the car? Well, I think in the, you know, once we went back to, to green with, what, 34 or 2 or something to go, you know, nobody really wanted to lead. Um, because it was right on the, on the margin there for fuel mileage, uh, you know, you, you get much better fuel mileage at least one spot back. Um, you know, we, we kind of just went back and forth to try and help each other out instead of having to drop back too far and mix it up and with people that we maybe didn't want to. So, yeah, we we, uh, we definitely talked before the restarts to try and, you know, see if we could do that. Um, and, you know, with this car, I think, you know, it, 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 it really pulls up, you know, I think, and towards the end with the grip level, um, you know, it was easy to stay close, it was easy to, to pull past. So, um, you know, that was, was mostly just to save fuel. A question for Tony. Being a good friend of Dan Weldon, race car drivers get so focused uh, when they put the helmet on and get into the car. Did thoughts of Dan ever uh, come through your head during the race? Did you ever think about him, or were you totally focused uh, on the 500 miles you drove? No. I mean, obviously, uh, you can look at the board every time you drive. So lap 26 and lap 77, I definitely thought about it, but not. Couldn't, uh, I could not lose my focus for that. And I think, uh, not just me, but uh, I know uh, you know, Scott and his family have done a lot for Dan's family uh, in the past few months. And they were good friends too, and, and so was Dario. So it's, I don't think it could have been a better result for Dan. You know, whatever he is right now, uh, he's definitely making fun of Sato, I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> and he's giving Dario tap in the back, for sure. And he was going to call me a wanker. That I didn't have this thing. So, uh, you know. I'm glad that this is over. I'm glad that uh, now I hope we can all move on and just remember Dan the way Dan was. A happy guy and a wonderful friend. Tony, this is for you and Scott for that matter. But Tony, I know that you and Dario, and I don't want to speak for Dario, but I know you guys were very close with, with Dan. So my, my, my question to you is, you were leading there toward the end. So it was going to either be you or, or Dario. We, we, we pretty much knew that. Were you thinking that if you won this race, it would be for Dan? At that time, I didn't want to think about it, but I mean, honestly, I would include Scott on that too. When I saw the three of us there, I said, well, Mr. Wendham will be happy today because I'm pretty sure the three of us were not going to go off or around, so one of us was going to win it. So uh, I said it all along that uh, obviously I wanted to win this race for myself, as bad as I've been trying. But this year will be off, obviously special you know, to put my face right beside his on the trophy and with Susie and Holly here and all the things that we've done for him. But uh, you know, I, I try not to think about it. I, I said, you know what, I, I don't anticipate things. I, I don't plan how I'm going to celebrate or, because it's not done until it's, the checker flag is out. So uh, I don't know. I'll save it for another time. Rubens, you've driven this car and you've also driven Formula One cars. What is the difference in the approach that you had, and you've driven them here, what's the difference in the approach driving Formula One car compared to the, the new car, and which one do you like better, and which one, from a professional standpoint, do you have more fun in? Well, I'm, in my life, whatever I do, whatever is right or wrong, I have fun. I have fun in what I, you know, if I am sitting on this car, it's because I'm having fun. I've already uh, proved to, to many people that you know I could have quit it. I have a wonderful wife and kids, could stay home in Brazil. But uh, I still love this too much, and um, you know it's it's just um, I, I honestly do this because I I was made to to do this. Um, on the on the cars, they are so different, they are so different, and that's why I think I'm still not there uh, competitive-wise. I think that I'm okay, I'm doing okay, but I'm, I'm not 100% just yet, because the car is more <coughs> loose and uh, being almost 200 kilos heavier, the car is um, more difficult to break for me. Um, I, I'm kind of a smooth driver with, uh, with the way I drive, and with this car you have to be just tougher because it's just uh, the steering wheel is, is heavy. I'm telling you, I think that my experience here on the Opal will help me um, have at least more feedback from, from the car as well because you run on such a light down <coughs> that I think it will help me. So.
So I look forward for Detroit next week. And actually, I'm, I'm testing Milwaukee on Tuesday. So all, it's everything happening so fast. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm a pretty fast learner as well, and I'm enjoying my time. Thanks. Tony, when you, when you took that lead on the restart there, uh, first of all, did you just fall your way, being that far back to get in front, or were you thinking how to make something happen? And then second, when you came back around, could you tell the reaction from the crowd? I mean, they went absolutely bonkers when you got to the lead. Did you, could you tell that? Well, I'm not going to say 